and roll it. And I think we got it all good. But today, I have the pleasure of interviewing a movie producer. And um, it, it's a film that she has put together uh, along some talented people that, um, well, you know, uh, we'll get to those points of uh, all the, you know, uh, some names can be uh, used because, well, we're in a time where, um, you know, if you if you share certain things, um, you could be ousted out of uh, the movie industry and certain high-end level jobs that are out here. And it's an, an unfortunate time for us. But I have with us um, Namrata Singh Gujra, and um, she is the maker of, the film uh, maker of America's Forgotten. Thank you so much, um, Namrata, for being here with us. Um, it, it's such a, you know, uh, we, uh, I press record, so we're good now. Uh, okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, there's a great backstory to this. Uh, you know, in fact, I'll, I'll just share with you lightly here what happened. Uh, I thought that I was getting interviewed, and it, and it, it turned out to be that I was the one that was supposed to be doing the interview. And so... <laughs> But, but we've we've agreed to interview each other because his story is also remarkable. <laughs> Thank you so much. But it, um, you know, uh, your team sent me the reel, and um, I watched it. Um, it got my attention immediately uh, because it's a source that I think um, a lot of America isn't aware of. I, I think that uh, a lot of America is is being duped uh, to believe a certain way. And uh, obviously the media has a lot to play with this, um, you know, a lot to do with what people watch. Um, you know, uh, most of it is, is very liberal, very left-sided. And, and uh, so, you know, they control the buttons and uh, the American people, if they don't do the research, if we don't do our homework, unfortunately we fall to, uh, we fall prey to what's, uh, what's going on in the real world um, in the borders. But I want to talk to you about your film. One, what, what's, what was the, the number one reason that, I mean, uh, I watched it, and obviously there's uh, this little girl that, that's the focal point of this film. Um, but can you share with us what, what's the, what got you out of your seat and said, I have to, I have to do this? What was that like? So, um, Casey, I am a two-time cancer survivor. I survived breast cancer and blood cancer. And as part of being a filmmaker, I do narratives and I do comedies and I do dramas. But I did one documentary about 10 years ago with Olivia Newton-John and Melissa Etheridge and Jacqueline Smith. And actually, a really dear friend of mine, she's a famous actress in Mexico, Barbara Mori. Barbara Mori. Um, and so she's, she's also a cancer survivor. And so um, in any event, that was the first documentary I did. And my second documentary that I'm putting together, um, and now it, it'll be the third one, it's titled Finding Match. And it's really about finding uh, organ and bone marrow transplant matches within ethnically diverse communities. Because people like you and I, uh, when we need uh, an organ transplant or we need a bone marrow transplant, it's very hard for us to find a match given our DNA because there's so few donors. I always like to get that opportunity to get that in there. So if you're in the minority communities, uh, Hispanic, Indian, South Asian, Asian, go out and donate bone marrow. That aside, so I was in India, I was shooting uh, parts of Finding Match. And as I mentioned in my film, I, um, I'm a registered Democrat and um, I follow politics very closely. And it just so happened when I was in India, I, um, the first Democratic debate for the, um, for the initial nominees was taking place. And I remember like I found a television that worked with this light debate and I was so excited. I'm like, oh my God, I'm in the Himalayas. I'm gonna watch the Democratic debate. This is awesome. So I'm watching this debate and Julian Castro, uh, I think he was a nominee from Texas. And he talked about Oscar and Valeria Martinez who were crossing from El Salvador. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Guatemala. And they, they drowned in the river. And the story just really struck me um, the, the image of the father and the daughter uh, laying in the, in the river. 
And um, the following morning, I was just sort of in my room. I was before I went down to for breakfast to meet with my crew, and I just kind of Googled it. And I just put in the Google search I put in was little girl who died on the US Mexico border this week. Because I had my Google location services on, it actually showed me the story. And then I started looking at it, but it wasn't the same girl. It was actually girl, because I was in India, it showed me a girl from India who was whose family was maybe a few hours away from where I was shooting this film, who had also died like just in the past few days. And so I went downstairs and I talked to my crew and I said, you know what, sometimes as you and I were just talking, um, I'm a big believer in God. I believe in the universe. I'm extremely spiritual. And I do believe that God has a plan for each one of us and he sends us in different directions to do different work for him. We, we work with God's grace, in God's grace and for God. That's how, that's how, I, how I think of life. And so I, um, I said to the crew, I said, there's a reason that I watched the debate when I couldn't get it last night and then I was able to watch it and then I Googled it, there's a story. I think we need to tell this girl's story. And initially when I started making the film, it was a, from a standpoint of which I'm, I'm extremely humanitarian. We all are, we're all very compassionate people, I think. And I think it was from the standpoint of showing the poverty or the persecution or the violence that would have driven this family out of India. And I wanted to showcase that story. But as I sort of investigated it and I went further, I realized that at least with this family, and then I did some more research and went around the world, that uh, the truly impoverished out of South Asia, that was the first chapter of the film, don't even make it out. They don't have the money to pay the coyotes. And, and that's, you know, that that's, when we look at footage and, and I, you know, those are that image of uh, that that little uh, uh, that Guatemalan uh, family there uh, laying uh, on their stomach in that river. It, it's an image that will capture you. And um, you know, uh, we came here to the United States from El Salvador in the early '70s, and um, you know, it was a time where it was a little bit easier to uh, come to uh, legally in, into the United States. Uh, unfortunately, people decide to, um, you know, do it the, the other way and come in here illegally. But um, in, in any case, you, you look at images like that, and then you look, if you, if you do research on Guatemala, on El Salvador, Honduras, uh, Mexico, you see that that imagery, if that's all you see, then, and then you see um, uh, uh, politicians on this side uh, condemning illegal immigration, I, I could I could see how that can strike a nerve uh, on someone who is Absolutely. not uh, 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 informed, and Absolutely. and 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 I think that your your film hit a note and strikes a note, and it's going to do an incredible um, uh, amount of uh, homework for people uh, that perhaps you know uh, don't see. The, necess the necessity to, to actually, you know, document for themselves and research themselves uh, what goes on in those countries and why they run from there to here and why are, there, why are they willing to risk their, their children, their, their own lives to come to a, uh, a better place. But your film is, is so captivating. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I, I'm here in the studio. As soon as the, the link was sent to me, I sat down and the link was, by the way, your timing was impeccable. Whoever sent that link uh, was just uh, okay. impeccable time. Yeah, because uh, I'm usually, uh, I'm that one guy that can't sit still. I'm going and going and going, you know. <laughs> uh, I'm either being interviewed or on an interview. And it's just, you know, it's, it's the business that we're both in, right? Uh, yes. It's go, go, go. Um, right. So finding a pocket of time to to sit and watch something uh it, it's very uh, it's a very narrow window but i sat and watched it and i went this is what everyone needs to watch just hands down this movie is going to educate both sides uh, and i'm going to say i'm going to be very daring and say it's going to educate every side yep. uh, you know uh, of, of the spectrum because it does the homework for you. Uh, and you did an incredible job in, in, in interviews. 
uh, the Mexican lady that, that comes over, uh, you know, and uh, gee whiz. I mean, and this, this is just one story uh, like, 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 like hers. And then you have, um, you know, um, Panja's, uh, 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 it's heartbreaking. It really is heartbreaking what people will, 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 be, will dare to do just to come to a better place. Um, so, so, you know, and, and by the way, uh, you know, um, uh, I have, a, uh, I've had to deal with someone with cancer in my, uh, uh, immediate family as well. And, um, thank you for mentioning that. Uh, I, I think that, you know, if you're, you're, you're able to, uh, uh, to be a donor, absolutely, uh, go, uh, do some research there as well. And, and do whatever that, that you possibly can to help out. Um, cancer just, uh, is, but this film, this film had me sitting down. Uh, I'm telling you, I stopped everything that I was doing. I sat down, watched it, and I went. <laughs> First of all, I, I, I wish I would have been part of it because this is a, a an issue that, um, uh, you know, I was with uh, Tom Holman last year. On a, at a speaking engagement, and, and he took the uh, the podium, and then I, and it's very hard to go after Tom Homan, by the way. I, I'm not sure if you, you know him. <laughs> I, I've heard of him, the uh, the ice ex ice director. Ice director, yeah. Uh, oh, he Homeland went Security. up there. Yeah. The Homeland Security, yeah, and he went up there, and did an incredible speech. I mean, just an incredible speech, and then you know, and then there's me going up there, and I went, how am I going to follow up after that? I mean, that this guy had people. You know, with a standing ovation, uh, and because he he did what what you did. I mean, you he, you exposed uh, all this. I mean, you 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 brought to light so much of what people just don't really understand or are willing to do the right thing. In you know, it's one thing to get secondhand um, you know messages or or news, and it's another thing when when we ourselves uh, push ourselves to doing that research. And I, and I, and I keep saying that because this is where uh, I think a lot of America is going, uh, you know, we got major uh, voting that's going to happen uh, within days here. Right. And um, the people need to be informed. And I think that your, your film coming out uh, this week is going to be amazing. Um, and if anybody has questions, Thank your you. movie answers a lot of uh, of those questions. Thank you. And Casey, remember that I was uh, one of those folks that came from the other standpoint and literally did a pivot in the film in terms of my position on illegal immigrant uh, yeah. immigration. And the reason I pivoted, and you know, this was at the behest of, um, and I say this in the film, I don't know if you remember that line where it says, if you're looking for a right or left film or a Democrat or Republican movie, you may as well quit watching right now because it was important for me to stay very unbiased, very focused yeah. in the middle, because at some point, I mean, I have to be honest with you, when I went into making this film, what I found out through the film just really didn't even align with what I had always known to be the truth. And so it was, uh, I actually came back, I talked to several friends in my industry in Hollywood, and uh, I gave an article, I think the other day to Newsweek or one of the newspapers that I was talking to, and I said, it was interesting because, um, most of my friends basically just said, oh, really? So this is what you're trying to, well, maybe you just walk away from the movie. I mean, that's not what you want to put out there. And then at some point, like one of my, he's a very well-known uh, person. Everyone would kind of maybe know him from Hollywood. And I said, yeah, but at what point do you, as a filmmaker, do you not, do you, at what point do you make a film that's in your head versus making a film that you're seeing through the camera? Because what I'm seeing through my lens is a truth that's very different from the truth in my head. And do I just walk away from the truth that I'm looking at? Because here is my camera and I'm looking at the truth. Uh, do I walk away from that because it doesn't align with my preconceived notions? Or do I go ahead and reflect that in the movie, make the movie regardless of me as a person and how I feel about it, and let the audience decide how they want to perceive it from there on. Yeah, and, and, and that's, the, that's the critical thing, right? Because, you know, you, you're, almost, you, you're almost being told, without being told, 
you're shooting you're shooting yourself on the, in the foot because this is not a popular subject. It doesn't uh, line up with Hollywood. Uh, it doesn't line up with um, politics that are common right now. That that you know, uh, there's a very uh, sensitive. It's a sensitive issue, um, and, and you're almost burying yourself, you know, alive if you film something like this. And I want to tell you something. I, I, I am such a, a, a big fan of anyone that goes against the grain because, you know, we have to be, we have to be truth tellers. We have to be, and, and, and listen, we can, we, can, we can say, well, you know, your truth is different from my truth and, and we can play that game right. with, with people. Right. But the truth is the truth, That's period. Right. There's no, you know, uh, somebody has to be wrong. I mean, there, there's, there, you know, if you have two things going on, both can't be, uh, I, I love what um, uh, this journalist, um, he actually made a film about it. Um, oh, geez, what's his name? Uh, the Case for Christ. Um, mm-hmm. But, but uh, in, in his, you know, he was seeking, you know, that truth, you know, is, is Jesus real? Is, is he really the son of God? And, and he's, a, he's a big journalist, uh, very uh, uh, highly credentialed in the Holy Yards. And his wife becomes a Christian, and then she, uh, you know, they have a little, uh, a, a little, a little heated moment in which he is driven to uh, prove her wrong. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that he comes to, uh, uh, one of his conclusions was, you know, both of us can't be right, and right. both of us can't be wrong. Right. One of us is right, and one of us is wrong, and that was his his thing. So I'm a big big uh, uh, cheerleader on the side for people like yourself that even when we're being told don't do that because that's that's going to be the end of your uh, of your career no the, the, the whole reason why we're in america to begin with is because of we this freedom that we have that's right that's it's right the freedom of expression the freedom of speech you know we we have those rights and those rights are given to us so that we can Exercise those rights. Absolutely. And uh, so I am just uh, grateful that uh, you were bold, that you didn't quit, that you continued, and in spite of uh, backlash. And and I know, look, I I think that sometimes we have to do the hard work ourselves because everybody is scared or everybody wants to, you know, remain uh, in the shadows. But it takes special people like yourself to come out in the front line and say, no, we're going to do this. We're going to finish this. We're going to make this right, number one. And we're going to tell the truth. I, I love that you put yourself in there, uh, you know, and, 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 and you, you made it so that if you're a Democrat, you can watch it. Right. If you're a Republican, you can sit there and watch it. And at the end of this film, you're going to have to make a decision, right. an intelligent decision, where you stand. Now that you've seen, you know, not partial truth, Right. Not just some truth, but the truth, and uh, I think this is what this film does. And so I'm, I'm just really proud of you. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad that um, you know you made this, and, and here you are, man. I, I'm just like, uh, and uh, I don't know where I sit in interviews with you, but thank God that uh, he gave me this opportunity to sit down <laughs> with you. Well, no, thank God I'm sitting with you because again, like I said. Uh, my publicist had actually talked to me about your story and about your book. Um, and I, uh, I actually said to one of the ladies there, uh, I don't know if I can mention names um, on the podcast and uh, on this interview, but I actually said, I said, oh my God, why didn't I know about him earlier? This would be a great, so actually I'll tell you, there are a lot of, there's, we feature four stories in America's Forgotten. Because of the pandemic, we actually couldn't shoot two other stories, one from China, because you know we went around the world and shot this one. So we have yeah. a story from India, we have a story from Mexico in this one. So the, the, uh, there were other stories. There was one I want to shoot in China, one I want to shoot in Kenya. And so I'm already planning America's Forgotten, the sequel. And I think you're going to be one of the four of that because your story is remarkable. <laughs> your story is, to me, an American story. An uh, American yeah, story. You. And I mean that with, as the most sincere compliment ever. Thank you, thank you, Nurada. You know, uh, um, and, and I would be so honored to to even be uh, in such a film with you, alongside of you, because we have the same views. I mean, you know, yes. you, 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 
if if all you're watching is is one news channel, if all you're watching is um, you know just one uh, one opinion, you're really not doing yourself any good. And um, right. you know uh, you uh, mentioning how you were raised thinking a certain way, uh, and then it wasn't until you actually you know run into these stories. And I think this is why storytelling is so important uh, to begin with, right? Because uh, we could, if all we if I'm, if, all, if all I'm watching is this right here, this green dot, well, that's all I'm going to know. And I'm going to be driven by a green dot right. and forgetting that there's so many more other colors out there and, and so many other stories, uh, compelling stories, true life uh, stories that where the narrative is, is is twisted and made to believe a certain way. You know, one of the things that has, that I love about this country is, and I say it every time I go in on speaking engagements uh, across the country or, or around the world. America is the only place that you can come here. Number one, it's a melting pot. Yes, it it, it, it welcomes everyone. It welcomes the rich and the poor. Yep. It welcomes whatever color you're from, whatever language, whatever culture. It it really opens up its doors. I've never I, I've never felt personally. I've never felt that America shut the door on me or my family. Uh, I, I felt that you know it was welcoming and, and all they're asking. The only thing that America is asking is come through the turnstiles. Let us you know do some vetting. Let us find out who you are. And then you're welcome to come in here and build the biggest dream possible that you can right. imagine for yourself right. and your right. family. Uh, and you, I, I don't think you could do that anywhere else like this. Uh, I, I'm, I'm yet to, That's to find my out. Knowledge, and especially with the investigation that was done during the film in different parts of the world, I, I think that I fell in love with America all over again after shooting this film. So, yeah. Wow. And, and that, that's, that's what it did to me. You know, I, I watched it and, and it just, you know, number one, it gave me goosebumps because you really do fall in love with America all over again. You fall in love. Uh, it brought me back to uh, sitting in, you know, kindergarten, second grade and standing up and, and putting my hand over my heart uh, and, 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 you know, all those things that singing, you know, America the Beautiful in, in, in you know, in third grade, uh, it, it just, it brought so much of that American fiber yes. back into me. Uh, you know, uh, I wasn't born here. And I, and I think that people that come here and then are allowed to stay here, we look at America a little bit different. I, I, I really do. I, I, I don't know what it is. I, I think that, and I'm not to say, you know, I talked with my, with my kids and, you know, they were, they were born here. And, and I keep reminding them, you know, I took my uh, daughter, uh, my oldest daughter, uh, to get her passport, her American passport, uh, went to the post office and we, we fixed all that up. And, and when it came in, uh, we went to pick it up. And I remember when, when, uh, she opened it. And, oh, she was uh, so excited. Well, yeah. And, 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 and I actually had to like tell her, you know, do you, you understand what you have in your hand? Do you understand what you have in your hand? Yeah. And she said, this is my passport. And God said, bless you. Yep. Yeah. I said, it's more than just a passport. That's right. That is the most um, sought after passport in the world. Yeah. Because this passport gives you an amount, uh, just an immense amount of freedom. You're an yeah. American. Yeah. You, you have, you, you have been born with full rights. Right. Don't ever forget that. And I, tr I try to tell my kids as much as possible the, the, the importance of understanding what an American. What it means uh, to be American. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, do you feel that way as well? I, I, mean, I absolutely know? do. I actually, uh, it's kind of funny because, um, uh, you know, a long time ago, many, many, many years ago, I was, they used to have this watch my wedding type thing on like a TV, like a show. And there was a woman who picked her theme. I'm talking like almost 25, 30 years ago. And she picked her theme on the 4th of July. And she said it was all about American flags. And I thought, well, why would you do your wedding as an American theme with flags? Like that's for the 4th of July. You know, 
why don't you just yeah. pick like Valentine's Day if you have to pick something different? <laughs> I will tell you that so many years later, uh, my husband and I were talking about redoing our vows. And I said to him, I said, how about on the 1st of July? As we, I think that the more I learn and the more I travel, I, I appreciate the United States of America even more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's the best country in the world, uh, you know, hands down. Um, you know, I, 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 <laughs> I didn't get on a plane till I was 46 years old. Wow. 46 wow. years old. I mean, that's, you know, and I remember my business partner uh, sitting next to me and, and he uh, tells the stewardess, he says, says uh, he jokingly, he says, you know, uh, can we get him some, uh, uh, some pilot wings? You know, we asked the pilot for some wings. <laughs> Usually those little right. flying wings uh, are right. for kids and right. stuff. Right, <laughs> But yeah, it was your first time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you get so your wings? Flight. Did you get the wings? <laughs> I didn't. I, 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 uh, I should have. I should have, but I was so embarrassed because he, you know, he, you know, right. I'm a 46 year old man, right. and I'm going on this book tour, and that's the only reason I'm, I'm actually flying. You know, you know right. the, uh, and uh, the first uh, place that I ended up uh, going was to Washington D.C. Uh, uh, and, and it was just an incredible time over there. But you know, you, you, and that's another thing. If you um, if you have to, as an American, you need to go to Washington D.C. and watch the history, the buildings, the oh, yeah. art, the architecture. Yeah. Yeah. It, it will just blow your mind away. It'll yeah. you, you will be so amazed at the rich history that America has, and um, and just the freedom that we have to. to I mean, just it, it's incredible to be right. on this soil. Um, but so your your film comes out this week. Tell us about it. I, I mean, how excited you got to be excited about this thing. I'm very excited. You know, um, I mean, I've done this a few times in my life. So it's kind of, I was, t I was giving another interview yesterday and I said, at some point, maybe it's like having multiple kids when you're on like kid number six, you're like, oh yeah, I think I delivered a baby today, you know? So it's, <laughs> I mean, you're so happy that you have a baby, but it's not the same. I mean, I'm not saying I'm any less excited about this one than I was about the first one. But when you've done it a few times, it's kind of, it's, it's more routine. It's like, okay, we're re releasing a picture. But I will say this, this is my first time working with a picture that is, uh, most of my films have been Bollywood related or India related or something like that, with the exception of the cancer documentary. I think this is my, this is my first time showing, showcasing my work to a very different set of audience than who I'm used to. And I haven't, showcased anything to this particular audience so i think from a standpoint of what this film stands for but also just from a filmmaking perspective i'm very curious and excited to see how this audience will receive my work just from even a, a creative standpoint so well, yeah i'll tell you this much um, i mean from my standpoint it, it's gonna it, if i think you have uh just earned yourself so many new fans oh, and so i much. i hope the very best for you because it's not your ordinary film. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, uh, I'm almost, I almost feel like I'm giving birth here, uh, you know, <laughs> to, to, to this thing because it's just uh, that, it's just that powerful. I mean, you know, and I, I don't you. say that about just uh, any kind of work. I really mean that. Uh, I'm uh, so and, and, honored. Thank you. I'm so yeah, honored. And, and yeah, so uh, I can't wait to to the, the film is called. America's Forgotten. It, every one of you that is out there listening to me to this podcast, I mean, you, go on YouTube, watch the trailer. More importantly, watch the entire film and go out there and make it a point to take your family, your friends, your kids, you know, before you even vote, check this out. Before like really, you vote. Yeah. Before you vote, go yeah. out there, watch this film in its entirety, and, and, and then just, you know, make an intelligent choice. Make an intelligent That's all I and, have to say, and, you know? Uh, yep, and actually in the film, just very quickly, because I know we're wrapping up, but in the film, um, I actually talk about my pivot with who I'm going to vote for this year, yeah. which in a million years last year, I would not have been saying that. But again, it's <laughs> because of the facts in this film, yeah. which as I was making the film uh, is what got me to that point where I actually changed that decision. But um, if your listeners and your viewers just go to just Google or go to America's Forgotten Movie, 
Facebook.com or Google America's Forgotten Movie or America's Forgotten Film. Uh, it's available on Salem. It's available on several other platforms, and you can see the platforms if you go to the website. And it would be uh, a big support, I think, for not just so much me, but I think for understanding America's truth and for supporting films that are fair to America. Amen. I mean, I, I agree 100%. Uh, America's Forgotten is coming at you. Uh, make sure that you go see it. Um, Namrata, uh, it, it, it's such a pleasure Thank meeting you, so you, talking to you, and even how it, all this <laughs> took place. <laughs> they have no clue. <laughs> they, no. They, they think that we have it all together. Uh, we right? don't, people. <laughs> right? We don't, we don't. But you would never know, it. <laughs> <laughs> but you would never know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're incredible, <laughs> and we'll stay in touch for the sequel, so... It, uh, oh, that would be an honor. Uh, I, I'm all in. You don't even have to ask twice. I'm all in. Thank you so much, uh, Los Thank Angeles. You. Make sure that you go out and watch this film. Um, go to the website. Uh, uh, look up uh, Namrata Singh uh, Jugra uh, and 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 do your homework. Um, make sure that you go vote. Um, but 